5G wireless is being called a quantum leap in technology, but it's also a global hot-button issue in terms of security and geopolitics. The Journal this morning publishing an article saying that any actions by the administration against China and Huawei could end up hurting America's 5G ambitions as well. Joining us to break down some of the most pressing arguments around 5G is Robert Spaulding. He is senior fellow at the Hudson Institute. And Robert, thanks for being here today. Glad to be here. Uh, we should point out you've played a very large role in this. Uh, you're a former National Security Council Secu Senior Director for Strategic Planning, and you wrote a proposal uh, in a memo that was leaked uh, and that people have kind of picked up on. Why, why don't you just talk a little bit about your work on, on 5G and what you think is important? Well, well first of all, um, this narrative that uh, you know, I was proposing nationalizing 5G is completely incorrect. It was actually a technical review. It wasn't a policy review. It was asking the question, the Chinese have gone so far ahead of us in 5G, what could we do as a nation to actually leapfrog and, and drive the, the future of global technology uh, development, which is what 5G will lead. And so that's what the study was about. One of the things that I think um, you have to look at with 5G, it's the first network that's not built for people, it's built for machines. We think of it as we're going to get faster uh, phones. No, that it's going to be for machines to communicate with each other and for us to communicate with machines. And so if you look at what's going on in the, in the world wide web world today, it's kind of like the Wild West. And so the idea was if you're going to have this increased level of connectedness with things that are moving around you, some of them are big enough, like self-driving cars can kill you, then we ought to think differently about how we secure that system. And so it was really about thinking about how national security is different in a globalized 21st century hyper-connected world. But it would require, I think you think, it, that it would require some pretty massive spending from the federal government's level. No, I don't think so. I think once you, um, once you open up the spectrum and once you um, begin to deploy it, the, it, the, the capital's there to finance the network. That's, that's not an issue. And, you know, so some of the numbers that were out there, Accenture said $275 billion to deploy across the United States, completely incorrect because they were using the high band, which is millimeter wave to deploy. It's far too dense a network. You actually need to, and that's what the study said, you need to deploy in mid-band because it gives you the best combination of capacity and coverage. When you do that, you drop it down to probably 50, 60 billion for a nationwide deployment, which is actually quite... Um, pre, right, quite good when you think about all the economic growth that's going to come on the, uh, on the back of that. What, what does this move against Huawei mean for China's ambitions? What does it mean for our ambitions? Well, um, what I wrote in the uh, in Daily Telegram last week is it's not just the executive order. What's more important is uh, putting Huawei on the entity list. And it's not just important in the United States. There's 42 uh, countries that are part of the Wassenaar arrangement. The Wassenaar arrangement countries are obliged to match the U.S. actions in terms of exporting uh, equipment to Huawei. Was it the right move or not? Should it be Absolutely the right move, but it's not sufficient. We need to continue to do more to actually secure our future in 5G networks.